Okay, my passion is basically to teach people how to become wealth creators. And as I said, I'm going to include a lot of tips, I think, as well as to show you the difference between doing things right and doing things wrong. Now, the first thing that we need to know is what, what does the word wealth mean? Because unless we understand certain things, we can't address it. And wealth simply, the way that I see it, means to have everything in abundance, to have life in abundance. Right. Now, the root word of the word wealth, well, comes from the Old English, which simply says and means well-being. You can't have well-beingness unless you've got it in all areas of your life. Does that make sense? Right. So a lot of people may have a lot of money, but they've got no relationships, as an example, or they've, got, they've already been through seven divorces, something like that. And to me, such a person is not necessarily successful. He, must, he can be a successful business person, but he's not necessarily a success. So what I'm teaching in terms of wealth creation is that to have life in abundance. And one of the things to have life in abundance simply means to have it in all seven areas. And the way to have it, of course, is uh, to have a constant and never-ending improvement. In other words, there's a constant growth. And the reason why I say that is the only thing that's going to give you, let's call it, uh, well-beingness, is the fact that a lot of people will tell us that we must have balance in our lives. It is impossible. You cannot have a balance. Because the moment that there's balance, there's stagnation. Right. But the moment that there's growth, we are fulfilling the fifth human need, which is to grow. So as long as you are growing, you are improving yourself, and for that reason, you will experience well-beingness. Does that make sense? In other words, the spirit, the function of the spirit is to grow. So you contribute. And by you growing, guess what happens? Immediately, you are starting to contribute, which is the sixth need. So simply by improving your consciousness, you are improving the consciousness of mankind. So the first thing, and that's why you can applaud yourself today for being here and sitting through a whole day and to apply the first, let's call it law, which is to invest in yourself. But there's two ways to invest. One way is to follow the system's way, and then the next way is to follow a wealth creator's way. And today I'm going to show you the wealth creator's way. Unfortunately, by me showing you this way, there's going to be a lot that you have to unlearn first. So a lot of the things that I'm going to tell you, immediately your subconscious mind will say, no ways, it's not working that way. Okay. If you get that feeling, just let it pass and just keep on listening. Right. You can query me afterwards uh, or yourself afterwards, but you're going to find that I think what I'm going to tell you today is going to make sense. Now, there's something else. A wealth creator, there's a certain sequence to this whole thing. And the sequent, sequence is, first of all, I must learn how to create or preserve what I've got. So creation and preservation goes hand in hand. You cannot separate the two. The reason for that, there's a paradox in life. And the paradox simply states this. The more money you're going to make, the more money you're going to create, the more opportunities you are creating at exactly the same time to lose it. Does that make sense? Exactly the same time you lose it. And the reason why that is, is because of the system. Now, let me show you. So create, preserve, and then enjoy. So those are the three things that a wealth creator must learn how to do. Create, preserve, and enjoy. Here's the thing. The moment that I enjoy something, but I did not earn the right to enjoy it, the moment that I do that, I'm going to pay a penalty. In other words, if I want to drive a car, it is possible if I've got the income, to buy the car the end of this month or immediately. Right, no problem. But in doing so, I'm renting a lifestyle. It's not my car. I'm renting a lifestyle. Does that make sense? That rent simply means that the, the system gave us the money, our income, because we've learned through the educational system to work for our money, we are therefore the slave of the income or our money. Does that make sense? 
So the moment that I then rent my lifestyle, I become part of the system because if I lose my job, I lose my lifestyle. Are you getting this? So it's vital. And because of the system, I need to keep my job. I realized this for the first time in my life in 1984. Go to Warriors Against Debt and read my little story. In 1984, I realized that, Sherbet, man, I'm part of the system. And unless I can break the system, I'll never get out of it to learn how to let my money work for me. But first, I need to break the system. In other words, I need to stop doing what I'm doing. And the only way to do that, guess what? Get rid of your debt. Because debt is related to renting of a lifestyle. Does it make sense?